the hang with you. Salute, 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 ATP. It's your boy, Clay Moore Rain. Back at you guys with another one. Shout out to all my subscribers. If this is your first time tapping into content, I'm going to invite you to go ahead and go ahead and hit that uh, subscribe button, right? Hit your bell icon as well so you are getting alerts when all this content is dropping. So listen, time to address the elephant in the room, guys. We've talked about it all. We've seen the press conference. We've had a whole year of um, the PBC um, putting on their events. We've had a whole entire um, year of the PBC and their deal with Amazon Prime. And now it's time to address the elephant in the room, right? We seen a press conference yesterday where Javante Tank Davis showed how tired he was of the politics, thought, said that boxing was, was was full of ish, right? And and ultimately said once out of the game, as far as I'm concerned, right? Said at the end of 2025, you're going to get about two to three more fights out of me. And ultimately, at the end of that, I'm looking to move on with my life, get therapy, get this anger out of me, be a better father, get out of the light. Uh, don't want nobody studying or following me. He was even asked questions about potentially, you know, moving into promoting and gtd promotions and having his own fighters that he was promoting and said no nope, i'm not interested in being any part of it i want out of the business completely right so what is javante tank davis saying i'm gonna be frank with you what i'm hearing him say is the politics of the sport the way the business is being done in the sport he's not appreciative of, of it he can't count on what people are telling him to do and he doesn't want to have to deal with this for the rest of his life dealing with people who he can't trust people who aren't honoring the words or honoring the agreements that they said that they would do with him right he's done with the politics i couldn't imagine him saying he doesn't want to be in politics anymore because of devin haney excuse me in, in boxing politics anymore because of devin haney i couldn't imagine him saying i don't want to be dealing with boxing and get money because of shakur stevenson or because of Keyshawn davis or because of content creators these things can come and go right these things mean nothing they're just moments in time they're not real issues in real life the reality is the business of boxing is a complicated business, and we've all known that. And when we're talking about PBC and the way the PBC has been running their business for years on end right now, going from network to network to network, we can all come to the conclusion and understanding that obviously it's not, everything's not black and white, right? And this being the last deal, the hair that may have broke the camel's back, this last deal with the PBC and Showtime which ended up with Showtime selling out to Paramount and Paramount seeing the structure of how boxing and Showtime were, were, were doing business and saying, we don't want no parts of it, right? We're going to move on from this. We want no parts of the way this business is being done. PBC having to leave that situation and go find a new agreement with a new network. And who did they find? A streaming service, Amazon Prime. Say, so listen, we can work it out as long as the business makes sense. As long as it makes dollars, it makes sense. Let's go ahead and put something together. But people like myself who saw this and understood the structure that was there in Showtime that facilitated a place for the PBC to showcase some of the biggest fights in the world, but more importantly, pay these fighters some of the largest purses that they've ever been paid. Big attraction for a lot of fighters to come to the PBC knowing that they were going to get these big payouts. But the, the, the peers... Right, the competitors in this space who are having issues with the way the PBC were doing business always had something that they said. They said, listen, this deal that the PBC is running, the structure that they have is not a sustainable deal because they're overpaying these fighters. Ultimately, A, having these um, fighters overpriced and wanting more money, making it harder to make fights with them and other fighters, and B, it wasn't very profitable, obviously, for the networks that they were working with. So while the PBC was going and cycling through networks and ultimately burning bridges with networks when it came to the sport of boxing, they finally hit a wall with Amazon Prime. When Amazon Prime said, we are interested in what boxing can do. We see how big the, event, the events are, but they look like, it just looks like from the outside looking in that this deal that was put together with Amazon Prime was more so focused on a return on investment, right? Money out, money in, money out, money in. And this right now with hindsight looks like it was a problem. It looks like it's a problem, right? Because the PBC unable to sell to Amazon, the reason why Amazon should put out a budget for the, P for the PBC to pay fighters like Javante Tank Davis north of $20 million guaranteed for every fight that he's gonna have. 
Now, this is a very important part of, of, of the conversation, right? Javante Tank Davis, during the time in the transition between when the PBC was leaving Showtime and going over to Amazon Prime, keep in mind, if you guys remember, that he had just come off of a very high pay that he received from pay, um, for fighting against Ryan Garcia, right? Huge pay-per-view, who sells money on the back end, guaranteed money up front, et cetera, et cetera. Him coming back as a boss on his hiatus after dealing with his, his legal issues, came back thinking he was going to move in a certain way. Now, Javante Tank Davis, I'm going to be honest with you. As the year has gone by, I really understand why people like Floyd Mayweather, Leonard Ellaby, or Al Heyman, or the PBC, whatever the powers that be, seem to always want to, you know, restrict Javante Tank Davis's ability to honestly speak, answer questions. If you guys remember and pay attention, Floyd Mayweather used to make it a regular thing to cut him off or get involved in the conversations, you know, grab the microphone, answer questions on the behalf of Javante Tank Davis, real controlling about the message that was getting people that was getting put out there and tank obviously had his frustrations about it and even to the point to where he walked away he took his team took his 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 talents away from mayweather promotions where he was at before and he went into his own promotional deal uh with gtd javante tank davis promotions and um did his own thing with al Heyman, right but there was an important thing that happened when he returned and it was in the interview that he was doing Najee, you know what let's, let's pull it up right let's pull up this interview you guys tell me what you're hearing here right let's talk about it 29. Good see, bro. Yeah. That deal that I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, that's that what he deal, has a part that's of the deal. He, he don't know about that yet. Mm. But that's bigger than his deal. Damn. Wow. And y'all just, and I'm just releasing it. It's exclusive. That's yeah. exclusive. Bigger than Floyd deal? Yeah. Hey, no cap, nigga. That's a lot of bread. You'll see. It's okay. going to come out. All right. Yeah, lastly, I want to ask you about this. Uh there it is where Tank Davis is speaking on a deal with Amazon Prime, right? This deal with Amazon Prime. Keep in mind that the deal he's talking about with Floyd Mayweather was a deal that he had with Showtime where he got about 200 million from what I understand, right? This is a deal where he was sitting on about 200 million, Floyd Mayweather. And Tank is saying this new deal he's going in with Amazon Prime and the PBC was going to be north of that. Now, a couple of weeks after this particular interview, uh, Tank spoke, not Tank, excuse me, rumors were going around, right? Um, journalists were going around putting out an article saying that Tank Davis had squared away a $240 million deal with Amazon Prime. Now, this was supposed to be like a six fight deal, right? So let's let's get to the bottom. Let me pull my trusty little calculator out here and let's see, $240 million divided by six fights. That's roughly about 40, I could have done that in my head. I don't even know why I made that a big deal, right? That's $40 million guaranteed each fight. Now, this is a lot of money, unprecedented, right? Like people gotta, we gotta be honest. First thing you wanna do when you hear something like this is you wanna celebrate Tank Davis for being able to square away a deal like this, right? This is life-changing money, $40 million a fight. And this also makes sense as to why Tank was so high on on, on, on his energy, high on the feeling of um, making this new deal and, 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 and very motivated on making the biggest fights that the fans wanted to see. And I'm gonna tell you the truth, me as a fan of boxing, seeing Tank Davis come in with that energy, I got excited right i was like well here it comes tank is about to start putting these fights together he's finally a boss he's finally bossing up he's benefiting and showing the world i can do this on my own he's speaking for himself um just you know and he's such an animated character when he wants to be funny but at the same time could be angry or at the same time could be uh serious you know what i mean or joking i mean when tank is in his in his best mo best mood he seems like a very pleasant person to be around right but there's an, then there's the other half of tank right and we'll get into that right but ultimately tank spoke about this deal and everybody was just for sure for certain that this means that tank is going to be able to offer the biggest paydays to the fighters that he wants to fight against and we don't care about the pay that he gets obviously we don't even care about the legacy as much i care about legacy but more importantly we want to see the fights right this is what we thought we were going to see but ultimately tank davis who at this point rejected an offer from turkey alashi right turkey alashi sending uh eddie hearn to represent an offer an interest of coordinating a fight between him and that time and devin haney offering him a 20 million dollar guarantee well when you look at a deal like this you can see why he would have told turkey that he wanted two ferraris right but turkey tried to do business the with him and that was interesting you know them six seven fights i saw uh the dude Turkey, Turkey Alashik, he's one of them guys now. He's doing different Who stuff in boxing. You know the Turkish dude that put the oh, Saudi Arabian yeah. cars? He said, yo, Tank, come over here. He was like, yo, 
Nissan two Ferraris before I even. Yeah, what was are you interested in that? Cause I just see you know him making moves. That? You know why I said that? Cause he was already talking like, talking like he was back in Devon. Mm. Like Devon is my guy. Like, all right, cool. Y'all want me to fight over there? Send me something first. Yeah. Send me something first. Right. Right. So there you see Tank Davis basically letting Najee know that the reasoning as to why he um, didn't accept or wasn't interested in working with Turkey. And, you know, obviously being a little arrogant, saying that if you're going to want to work with me, being that, you know, you are you seem to be celebrating and championing, championing um, um, Devin Haney, that, you know, legitimately, if you want to have a conversation about putting a fight together, send me something significant. And he thought that two Ferraris was something that he should ask for. Well, Turkey responded to that via social media saying, I have nothing for you here, but two boxing gloves if you want to fight, right? And obviously some decent, a good payday, obviously, right? But Tank feeling himself, being confident about his situation that obviously the PBC communicated with him, that Amazon Prime or somebody communicated with him that he had this huge deal that was going to get ironed out, which shut up all the haters and let him know that he's back in the game and you can't stop his growth. Well, look, I was here. I'm all for it. But we fast forward past this event here, which was the Frank Martin um, and uh, uh, um, Durante Tank Davis uh, press release um, uh, event. We fast forward to this event right here, which is him and Lamont Roach, right? We fast forward to this and it's him and Lamont Roach. And we got to ask ourselves, what changed in between then and now? Tank wasn't talking about retirement. Tank was talk wasn't talking about any of these things, right? What changed in between then and and now to have tank davis feeling the way that he's feeling right and this is the elephant in the room that we have to address we have to be honest that something's going on here and you can't be scared to talk about it right are we ready to address the elephant in the room now at this point seeing tank davis going through what he's going through feeling the way he's feeling are we ready to address the elephant in the room how is the PVC and Amazon Prime deal structured? Exactly how is it structured, ladies and gentlemen? In the spirit of seeing the fights that you guys want to see, in the spirit of boxing being bigger and being the best sport in the world, at what point are we going to get comfortable talking about this topic right here and, and acknowledging that this is a very important topic when it comes to the subject of what is going on with Javante Tank Davis? What is going on with Errol Spence's return? Jamel Charles' return? What is going on with about 10 boxing events that we have not seen this year? Why? Why? And is it reasonable to argue at this point that however these deals are structured, that to Devontae Tank Davis, watching a Canelo Alvarez get 30 plus million dollars guaranteed to fight an Edgar Berlanga, calling him a face of boxing, Calling Javante Tank Davis a, a face of boxing. If you're telling him that he's sitting here expecting close to $40 million guaranteed for every fight, rumors going around and circulating that he was getting offered somewhere between three to $5 million guaranteed to fight Lamont Roach. That's a huge stretch and a big difference between that and $40 million guaranteed. I would think if I was Tank Davis, I'd be a little discouraged myself, right? I definitely feel a little discouraged myself. Now you compound that with an event, a press conference for his fight against Lamont Roach, receiving the lowest budget. You can tell the production was at a low level. The media that was there was not the highest level of media, right? Not a lot of people showed up, not a lot of interest by the PBC. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by not a lot of interest in the PBC? Well, when you're watching the event, ask yourself a question. Where was Leonard Ellerby? Where was Kenny Ellis? Where was Calvin Ford? Where was the PBC at this event? Where was the representation? If you watch it and you're, and you're honest about it, you're going to see Tank Davis on one side on a long table, and you're going to see six, a guy they call 6'4". I can't remember what his, what his name is. But he operates in some sort of capacity with um, Tank Davis's um, promotional company. And on the other side, you saw you know, what made sense, more sense, and what you expected to see on Tank's side was what you saw on the other side, which was Lamont Roach and his father slash trainer there at the press conference ready to answer questions and market and sell this fight. But where was Leonard? Where was Javante Tank Davis's team? You know, reminiscent of, let's say, a Ryan Garcia after he lost against Javante Tank Davis that ended up having to show up onto the um, 
onto the stage with just his father, right? No Oscar De La Hoya, no Bernard Hopkins. Where was the support for Javante Tank Davis at his press conference? You know, Javante showed his feelings right there on his face, right? He didn't hide the way he was feeling. You just could read and cut through the tension with a with a butter knife as to how embarrassing and how uh, on his own he was on that stage, and even made little comments about you know the last time he fought in the Barclays Center or the first time he fought in the Barclays Center, which was against Jose Pedraza. How he was he had the whole entire place against him. Jose Pedraza being a Puerto Rican, right, in in New York and Barclays, and he 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 was used to it, but he spoke about it in a very you know it, it sounds like a metaphor towards a lot of the situation that he felt like he was going through at that point and people can go ahead and move this project this into another direction deflect this into another direction but at the end of the day you know we all have eyes in our head and we all can see the reality is where i'm speculating where i am speculating right now regardless of how you want to paint it it's still legitimate a legitimate reasonable speculation to a a answer the question that i had on the screen before which is how is that deal structured with amazon prime and how is it to the point where tank davis would be willing to walk away supposedly from a 240 million dollar deal 40 million dollars per fight if tank davis truly only fights two more times um next year he'll that'll be a little bit over half the fights that he said he was going to do one more you know what i'm saying so if he does let's say three fights this year he'll be at four fights on his contract if he does only two fights next year he'll be at three fights on his contract leaving anywhere from 100 to 80 to 120 million dollars on the table is that something that tank davis is is going to do is that what he truly wants to do or in all reality can we just be honest to say that we have no evidence to say that this deal is even a real deal and whatever deal tank has that's on the table is not lucrative enough to keep him is not lucrative enough to keep him boxing for the rest and the remainder of the fights on that deal i mean it is what it is right but i'll leave it at that i'll leave it at you guys but i do think at some point in time the conversation has to become a welcome conversation because the reality is we're seeing in front of our face the pbc is just degrading as far as their ability to deliver quality um, production, we're seeing decent fights because there are good fighters over there. But we're also seeing a lot of inactivity from a lot of fighters on that on, on that um, on that platform. And here we are in the present day, where they're where the the fighter that's on the top, their face of boxing, right? Their biggest fighter that they have outside of Canelo Alvarez, if you choose to acknowledge him as a PBC fighter, is threatening to literally retire at this point. And you're seeing him doing on a stage without any support from the PBC. You don't see Leonard Ellerby there. You don't see none of those um, th th those elements that were that you're used to seeing support him on these fights. So it is what it is, right? You guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, are we looking too deep in it at this point at four uh, at the fourth quarter of the year, or do we need another year? Of this are we jumping the gun? You know how you guys do sometimes. Let me know what you think. It's your boy Claymore Rain. This is the ATP Combat Media Show. Shout out again to my, all my subscribers. If this is your first time tapping into content, just like I did in the beginning of this video, I'm going to do it now. I invite you to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit your bell icons as well so you are getting alerts when all this content is dropping. But at this point, we out.